Hey, good morning everyone. So I had my echo bubble test on Wednesday and um, they didn't see anything major. I do have two leaky valves, but a lot of people do. It's not what's causing um, really any problems. Um, it's not causing the pulmonary embolisms either. So um, there's that. But I will tell you one word to describe a bubble test, barfy, if it's not done right. It was so gross. So it took two people um, and I'm queasy about IVs. Like, I don't want to hear any descriptive words. Um, don't tell me what you're doing. It just makes me want to throw up. So, of course, they were telling me everything, and I finally had to say, can you not say that out loud? And he's like, oh, sorry, ma'am. I'm like, and can you not call me ma'am? <laughs> but the first time that they did it, where it was a bust, um, so two guys, one guy is doing the echo and the other guy is um, connected. He has two syringes connected to my IV and the echo guy is telling him, now get the blood in there. Now mix it with this uh, saline and get it nice and frothy. Frothy? I'm sorry, gross. And he's like, when I say go, I'm gonna have you push it through her IV so the bubbles don't dissipate and it goes straight to the heart. Go, he pushes it freaking hurts in my bicep and I was like um ew gross ow and it goes silent and then he gets his walkie talkie I need a supervisor and he is like dancing around the room I don't know what's happening so I'm like um can you tell me what's going on yeah the bubbles didn't make it to your heart something's up with your IV I'm like super anyway it was disgusting I touched my bicep and it was squishier than normal it was gross so they did it a second time the bubbles made it it didn't leak into any other chambers which means i don't have holes in my heart so that's fine um second thing two nights ago i apparently stopped breathing it's nothing to be alarmed about it was for a very short bit but my husband woke up because he didn't hear me breathing and he got a little panicky and so he's like leaning over me trying to see what's going on. And I am not making a sound and then all of a sudden, <gasps> could you imagine? That would freak me out. And he said I did that twice. And he's like, oh man, I need to stay up and watch her. Well, I'm sleepy. Hopefully see you in the morning, night night. <laughs> I was fine, but I did let my doctor know. So I'm gonna um, have my oxygen measured uh, one of these nights coming up. They just bring over a little pulse oximeter. I tape it to my finger and sleep. It collects data and then I drop it off and they submit the data to my doctor. Easy peasy, so why not do that? So I'll be doing that soon. I am sleeping with my oxygen and I was when I stopped um, breathing for just a minute. So I don't know what that is, but I'm not overly concerned, honestly. Um, I do have my thyroid appointment um, next week. So we'll see if anything needs to come out. If I'm gonna be lucky to get a scar, we'll see. Anyway, if man, if there's even a minute chance that it would take away these jerkings, please do it. So we'll see what they say. Um, my husband and I did go on a walk and he was holding my oxygen in his backpack and then I was connected with a tube and he's like, I am literally the wind beneath your wings right now. I'm like, yes, you are. And we go to cross the street and here comes a big truck. He's ahead of me. I'm behind with tubing in the middle. And it instantly reminded me of a scene from a movie. If you haven't seen this movie, maybe you should watch it. I don't know. I liked it. It's a Sundance Film Festival movie and it's called Peanut Butter Falcon. I thought it was great. And it's the scene where they're trying to swim across the river and they're connected by a rope. And here comes a boat. Anyway, I felt like Peanut Butter Falcon. Um, okay, on a serious note, um, I've had the opportunity to talk to quite a few people this week, just running into people or um, even my technician at the hospital. Anyway, the common theme for everyone was they had heavy stuff going on. And I'm thinking that everyone has heavy stuff going on. Even the guy who's a jerk behind the wheel on the freeway heavy stuff going on and you typically don't know because people either hide it behind a smile 
or behind grumpiness or they're quiet and pull away. But everyone has something going on and um, I firmly believe we never compare our trials, but we all can have something in common and that's God leaning on him to help us and to send people in our path to help us. Um, I've experienced that and um, for those of my sweet friends that um, are in a faith crisis, um, I kind of don't like that phrase, but if you're kind of questioning what you believe or you don't know that there is a God and you know me, please trust me to know that there is a God until you find out for yourself. Um, I'm not one to be easily fooled. I question a lot and I've, I don't need to question anymore. I know. I know there is a God who listens to you and that your trials, if they're heavy to you, they are heavy to him and he cares about you and wants to bless you. And if taking away your trial is not part of the plan, he will give you compensatory blessings to help you. You just have to look for him. So anyway, that's my testimony. I do know that God lives and he cares and that Jesus Christ died for us, not just to experience the feelings of sin, to know how to succor us and to pay for that sin, but to experience the feelings of suffering too. So he knows exactly what you need and when you need it. And he will send most likely people in your path to help, help you get through it and to not feel alone and to feel his love. So anyway, I've experienced that many times. All right. I love you guys. Um, I will probably update more later next week. Have a good weekend.